Hey, I take paid speed and performance of my websites quite seriously. I don't know about you. You want to make sure your website looks amazing or your clients get all the features and functionality in there. But if when you're running a page speed insight, the desktop and the mobile score ain't so good, don't you feel a little bit remorseful or sad? And it could affect how well you're doing in the Google search rankings as well. We did a video in 2022, which went down really well. And this is an updated one. I want to tell you now, a lot of the methodology I was using last year, I'm not using now. I've adapted and changed my ways. And I want to show you those tips and tricks right now. By the way, I am using Elementor, but what I talk about here, you can do with other page builders and within WordPress itself. Of course, there will be some stuff you can only do in Elementor, but like I said, I'll cover that all off for you. Are you ready? We're going to start off with the Elemental settings. Now, you might want to skip this bit, but please don't, because some of the things I mentioned here, you might want to put into practice with the other page builders or just general WordPress as well. Now, in Elemental, oh, by the way, this is a fresh WordPress installation, and all we have on here is Elementor and Elementor Pro. There are no other plugins activated on here at the moment. And the basic settings that I've applied, well, you can see them here. I've disabled the default colors and uh, fonts. I've got no other integrations added in. There's nothing changed on the advanced. You know, everything, um, all I've done is enabled unfiltered file uploads for some SVGs, but don't worry about that. Google font loads is swap, and I'm leaving everything as it is. The only things I have touched are in the experiment. So I have said improved CSS loading, activate that. And then further down, I've activated the optimized DOM output and the improved asset loading. That is all I have done there. The next thing was the custom fonts. Now, if you are using any page builder or WordPress, don't just use Google fonts. Otherwise, you're fetching from the Google server, and that is going to add split seconds onto your page speed insights. And you might go, well, split second, who cares? It adds up, and it can knock your score down by 20 to 25%. On this website, I'll be using a Lato. So what I've done is I've clicked Add New. Once you click Add New, you'll basically come to this screen. I've put the word Lato, and when I've said Add Font Variation, all you do here is you can pick... Um, WAF files or TTF files, and then I've uploaded uh, these that I've downloaded off the Google website or anywhere else where you want to get them, and ensure that I've then assigned them to these different sizes. It's pretty, pretty simple. So if you're using two or three fonts, please do this because you will regret it. I know so many people who don't do this at the start, and then later on, they're trying to work out, well, what styles was I using? This helps to control things. And then the final thing I've done before I now start to go on to what is the impact on the website is if you go over to your WordPress settings, go down to media, I've set all of these to be zero, and I have unticked these as well. Now, if you want to leave them in, go for it. But I'm not a fan of lots of duplicate images being created in the back-end media library. Not the media library, your WordPress database, okay? Um, I would go for this. I have found it works a whole lot better than if you just leave the default values in when you have a fresh WordPress installation. I do have to mention images. If you're loading any into your WordPress media library, make sure you convert them into WebP. Bulkresizephotos.com, totally free. I'm gonna drop in an image into here. We'll go with this one here, which is 1.4 megabytes in size. Uh, it's a 1920 by 1080. I'm gonna leave the size at 100% because we can scale and crop it bigger and smaller inside the media library, WebP format, and I'm going to make it be 80%. 80% is totally, totally fine. We'll hit start, and there you go, it's done it. It's gone from 1.4 megabytes to 134 kilobytes. Remember, it's 1920 by 1080. That's down to 10%. Sometimes it goes down to 5% of what it originally was. You can add as many images as you want. You can, I've, the bit, the most I ever did once was about 130 odd. I just added them all in in one go. It took about a minute because there was 130, but it does it. And then it downloads it for you. And then you stick that in your media library because otherwise you're going to get hit by the next generation format issue in PageSpeed Insights. All of the images inside this website are WebP format, except the fonts and the SVG icons. Now you'll notice over here, I have this image in twice. I've got it in there and I've got it in there. 
The reason I've done that is because if I was going to use this as my desktop image, you might want to go with a 1920 by 1080 or whatever size you want. Let's say this is a hero banner, uh, so you've got your desktop uh, cover image there. When you come to the mobile, you don't want to still be using the same image. What you need to do is have a copy of that image, go to edit, scale and crop it so that rather than having a landscape, you now have a portrait version. If you use the same image, it's going to get highlighted in the page speed insight. So what you got to do is make sure you have a portrait style image or a smaller image for the mobile. Um, and when you're using Elementor or Bricks Builder, you will have the option to do that. Once you set your hero banner, when you go to mobile responsive mode, the image will be grayed out, which means you can swap it with another image. So in this example here, I'm going to scale this to be 700 like that. I find 700 as a height is really, really good. That is now scaled to 700. Then hit X, then go back into it. Don't do the scale and the crop at the same time because WordPress doesn't like that and it reverts it back to the original size. Then I'm going to hit edit over here. Then I hit crop and then I'm going to just pick this up over here and drag it to the right. I'm going to change that to be 500 and you can see what it's done now and now I can sort of decide well how big is the mobile image going to be so I might pretend to go with something like that obviously you would go for an image that hasn't got words on it so I picked a pretty bad example there you hit crop you hit save and if we now go over here there's my original image for the desktop and there's my version that I might use on the mobile or I might use a completely different image. That's totally okay as well. Seriously, take the alternate versions of the images for your desktop and mobile and the WebP format seriously. Okay, and remember, get all this done at the start before you start using or building with anything in your media library. Pretty basic, right? Nothing to write home about. You know, I mean, all I've done is the elemental experiments, um, change my media sizes in the WordPress settings and a custom font. Of course, regenerate your CSS as well, but that's about it. Nothing fancy. What I'm now going to show you is what is the score. Now, at this point, you're going to go and say, oh, is that it? That's not even a full page. You just got a header over there. I want to make a very shrewd point here. This is a blank page with a basic header. And this header is using the font that we loaded up. Because if I was to go over here to my site settings in Elementor, I go to global fonts, all of these fonts right now are using, look, if I click here, it's using the custom font Lato. That is standard across the entire website. So what do you think this score is gonna be for a blank page? And if you don't, I mean, by the way, look, this has even been optimized for the mobile, so it all fits very nicely. So what do you think will be the score here? Well, I'll show you 75 on the mobile and 91 on the desktop. And when you scroll down, you're going to see a few issues coming proper. I mean, it's not major. I have to be honest. It is very basic what it is saying. But when you click here, there's lots of render blocking resources going on there. Even though that is a blank page, except for the header, the score is 75. Sometimes you might hit 80, but you're looking at around about mid 70s. With Elementor, with a blank page where you haven't even added in your content, that's not good. If you were using Bricks Builder, it's probably most likely going to be hitting 99 or 100. But the point I want to make is, if you are working on a website, before you build anything, if your score is dropping down to like something like that, even 80, even 90, and it's not your server speed, you want to make sure you cover off the steps that I'm going to show you right now. I've added in three new plugins and you can add this to any WordPress website, Elementor, Bricks Builder, Gutenberg, whatever you're using. Code snippets, because we're going to add in a load of snippets and believe me, they are all nice and fun and easy, kind of. Fast Press and WP Meteor. Now in previous videos, I was using WP Fastest Cache and I was also using Autoptimize. I still like using them, don't get me wrong, but what I am finding is that these are a lot more simpler and easier to apply and they work and do the job. One plugin I've not added is Asset Cleanup, which you could use for a WooCommerce website or if you've had appointment bookings, if you want to stop certain plugins um, loading up their JavaScript on your page. But let's keep this really simple. Let's just go over to FastPress first. This is All of these are free plugins. 
everything I'm showing you here today, you can do for free, except Elementor Pro or Bricks Builder, where you gotta go and get a license. Let's go to Fast Press and the settings. You can see what I have turned on and what I have left off. Um, I, I always go for this zigzag pattern on fast press because it works for me. In terms of the images, I have said not to lazy load. Now, even though I've said don't lazy load, I am going to show you a snippet to enforce that as well. Why don't I want to lazy load the images? Well, if you allow lazy load, it will lazy load the very first one or two images. Maybe your logo, maybe your hero banner. And that is going to add on a delay, you know, the time to the first bite and things like that. So make sure you follow that. And when we get down to the HTML, CSS and JS, all of them are activated except load scripts asynchronously <laughs> because we're using WP Meteor. And I have found WP Meteor does a better job than this. Remember, these are all free. There's no subscription. There's no, you know, freemium or anything like that. That is all you do. And that is why I like this plugin. Well, Toptimize was one of my favorites, but you were going through three or four screens and there was lots of options. And I have to be honest, some of them didn't make total sense, but this is all you do. Then we're gonna go over to WP Meteor. And this one could not be easier. It will be set to something like that. I just pulled it all the way, delay until first in, uh, interaction. Now, for anyone that goes, isn't this like Nitro Pack? No, it's not. Because with Nitro Pack, remember, when you're viewing the page, you'd get a blank page over here. It almost tricks the system. You know what I'm talking about, okay? Anyone out here that thinks Nitro Pack is really good, psh, get away. I don't, I don't want to be talking to you. But that's all I've done with WP Meteor. Um, there are some other options here of exclusions and elemental where you can say run entrance animations. Well, i am not got any, but if I did, I would tick it. Emulate emulent, uh, Elemental Power Pack Pro Menu. I don't even fully understand what the heck that means. So I leave them both off. But I might enable this one if I had any entrance animations. But like I said, this is as easy and simple as it gets. Then we go over to Code Snippets. This is a free plugin that you can get from the WordPress repository. I strongly recommend you getting it. And here are all the snippets that I've added. Now, all of these will be linked into one page that you'll see in our YouTube description. Go and click the link and you will then have access to them. I'm just gonna run through these really, really quickly. The Remove Google Font. This ensures there are no Google fonts being loaded. Now, when you go to your page builder, you can still select it, but by saying remove Google fonts, it's no longer fetching. So let's say you went and picked railway within Elementor. When you're viewing it on the live, you'll probably get Roboto or Roboto condensed returned because it will no longer fetch that. Believe me, fetching Google fonts has a big impact on your site. The second one is ensure the web font is loaded. Now, hold on, we just loaded the custom font. So why wouldn't it load it? Well, sometimes the websites, they kind of, you think they're preloading, but they're not really doing it. And there were options in Asset Cleanup and Autoptimize that I was having to activate. And then you're copy pasting the code that you get in PageSpeed Insights over to one of those to get it to work. Here's another code snippet. And by the way, if you're wondering what these look like, you just give it a title, you paste it in, you hit save changes and you activate. And I have all of these activated right now. And I'm telling you now, they are safe and secure and they work brilliantly. The next one is Stop Lazy Load. We've already said to um, Fast Press, don't lazy load. And you could trust the plugin, but I'm sticking in another snippet to ensure nothing is lazy loaded. Now, maybe you do want some images to be lazy loaded. Well, when you add the image, normally in page builders, you can apply and say, yep, lazy load the gallery or lazy load the image or lazy load the video. You can do that on the fly. Because if you allow WordPress, which at the moment lazy loads everything to take over control, you're going to regret it. So that is now stops lazy load. We also have one for remove unused JavaScript. That will pop up um, within your page speed insights as well. And often we're left there scratching our heads going, well, how do I remove that? And it's a really bad problem when the JavaScript actually relates to your optimization tool. So you're like, I can't remove that because then it removes my or affects my optimization tool. So what do I do there? Anyway, there's another bit of code for that. How about fix image with widths and heights? So you might have images in your library that you've added to your pages and whatever. 
You've ensured it's got the proper width, the proper height, crop scale, the works, but this issue still crops up and you're sat there again, scratching your head. Why am I getting this issue? Put this bit of code in. You don't have to modify anything in any of these codes, okay? You just stick them in and away you go. And the very last one is remove Gutenberg CSS. Now, if you're using WordPress Gutenberg, you might not want this. But if you're using Elementor or Bricks or anything else, you're not using the post format. You can still, even after activating this, you can still go into your post. You can still use, I mean, look, I can, look, I've activated this. If I go over to post and I go to add new, I still have access to the items over here. They've not disappeared. The only difference is that it doesn't need to be loading that because when those posts are presented to the big world wide web, you're probably using your Elementor post template or your Bricks template or Spectra or something else. So you don't have to have that activated. And again, you're removing unnecessary bits of code. What does that now mean for our page that only had the header if we now go and review the page speed insights? The mobile is now 100%. Ignore that 92, it's just a heading, all right? I haven't really done like, you know, the proper meta keywords and all of that, but it's 100% for performance. And the desktop is also 100%. Remember, this is pulling through the actual page. Not like NitroPack or other solutions out there that kind of trick the system with a blank page. This is the proper page coming through. And look, look what we're getting here. I'm on a SiteGround server. It is a SiteGround shared hosting server with lots of other websites on there. Look at what we're getting through, come through on here. This is massively, massively impressive, okay? And even on the desktop, well, you're always gonna get roughly 0.3 on a very, very good day. And what about the issues? There is not a single issue being cropped up here at all. There's no recommendations. There's nothing in red. Now, again, you're going to be sat there going, yeah, but Imran, that's really, really easy. You just got a blank page with a header. You're missing the point. Before you start building anything, you should be hitting 100%. I'll let it go on about 99, but you should be hitting 100%. And if it wasn't, I would probably run it again five minutes later regenerate your CSS, purge your server or your site, you know, however you want to do it and check again five minutes later because it might be server speed. But you need to be hitting a high score so that when you build your header, you check the score. You do your hero banner, you check the score. What is making your score drop? Oh, damn, I went and used a font that's not custom loaded. I went and put a video in the hero banner. Don't do that. Slider, carousels all over the place. Inner sections galore. Inner, inner, inner. What are you doing? So when your score drops down to 95 or 90, review it. You might go, well, look, I can't get away with it. I've got to have this stuff in here, okay? It's what the client wants. It's what I want. Fine. You draw a line in the sand and away you go. But the big mistake a lot of people make is they build a website. They build out all 20 pages. And then they're going, my website's only scoring 10% on the mobile or 35% on the desktop. I want to get it up. You start hiring people. You start reading articles and videos. Let me tell you now, you are in for a world of pain and you might only ever improve your score on the mobile from 10% to 15% because you know what? The damage is almost already done. You've tried out so many plugins and solutions. There's a lot of rubbish and cack sitting in your WordPress databases. Unless you trawl through them, you're going to be stuck. I'm not trying to say that you can't fix a website. Of course you can. We have fixed other people's websites and work with them and improve things. Get in touch if you want to know how. But save yourself the hassle from the get-go. Follow the video. Look at the solutions we've added in. Look at our settings. Adapt them if you find you need to, but go with the settings I've put in. Start with 100. Build, test, build, test, build, test and you're gonna be a much happier web developer, designer, digital creator, problem solver. Hey, I'm Imran Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, goddamn share this video, and keep following. This is the PageSpeed 2023 video. I'll see you. Never break, always fight, never quit. Do it right, play the game, win your life. Have no shame, there's no time for the pain. The grind, I could change in my mind. Pick a lane, commit and climb. The only way to win in life.
I never miss that fact. Taking big swings, bitch, hand me the bat. Put me in the ring.